How can you find the volume of a rectangular prism with fractional edge lengths? Think about this question during the lesson. What is the volume of the rectangular prism? Remember that the volume is the number of cubic units needed to fill a solid figure. Why can't you use one-inch cubes to find the volume of the prism? What size cubes can be used to fill the prism? You can't use one-inch cubes to find the volume of the prism because the edge lengths are not whole numbers. You can use cubes with one-half-inch edge lengths to fill the prism. Step 1. Find the number of one-half-inch cubes that will fill the rectangular prism. Five one-half-inch cubes fit along each two-and-one-half-inch edge of the prism. So the bottom layer has five times five, or twenty-five cubes. The prism is three cubes high, so there are twenty-five times three, or seventy-five cubes in the prism. Step 2. Find the volume of each smaller one-half-inch cube by using it to fill a unit cube. There are four smaller cubes on the bottom layer of the unit cube, and the unit cube is two smaller cubes high. How many smaller cubes fill the unit cube? Select your answer. There are four times two, or eight, smaller cubes in the unit cube, so each one-half-inch cube has one-eighth the volume of a unit cube or one-eighth times one cubic inch equals one-eighth of a cubic inch. Step 3. Find the volume of the prism. Multiply the volume of each one-half-inch cube by the total number of cubes that fill the prism. The volume of the rectangular prism is nine and three-eighths cubic inches. Use the correct units to describe area and volume. Now you know how you can find the volume of a rectangular prism with fractional edge lengths. Find the volume of the rectangular prism built from one-half inch cubes. The bottom layer has blank cubes, so let's look at the bottom layer. Here's our bottom layer here, right? All of these cubes in that layer. So we have to see, we have the prism is, let's see, how many cubes? We have one, two, three, four, five this way. Then we have one, two, three that way. So the total number of cubes in that bottom layer would be 5 times 3, which is 15. The prism is blank cubes high. So let's see how many cubes high. So we have 1, 2, 3 cubes high. And then we have, there are a total of blank cubes in the prism. So 15 times 3 is 45. That gave us the total amount of all of the cubes of that prism. Now, each cube has a volume of blank inches cubed. So we know that each of these cubes uh, 
there we go. Each one of these cubes is half an inch, half an inch, half an inch based on the example before it. So we want to find the volume of each one of those cubes. We have to multiply, let me just write the formula real quick. Volume is equal to length times width times height. So we multiply those three numbers, one half times one half times one half. So one half times one half times one half is equal to one eighth inches cubed. So the volume of one of those cubes is one eighth. So the volume of the prism would be the 45 cubes times the volume of one cube, which is one eighth, and multiply that together. 45 times one eighth. And that is equal five and five eighths. There we go. So the volume is five and five eighths inches cubed. And now you see that little three there instead of the two that we would see with area because now cubed is for three dimensional shapes. So that's why it is cubed. Sean bought the fish tank shown. What is the volume of Sean's fish tank? Formula for volume is length times width times height. And so we use that. We have our length, width, height. They've substituted them all. And then we had to take the mixed numbers, make them improper fractions and we made the whole number a fraction by putting it over one and then you multiply straight across uh, it's 40 over 9 but we want to make that improper fraction into a mixed number uh, simplifying it and we get four and four ninths so the volume of the fish tank is four and four ninths feet cubed Ada has a ring box in the shape of a rectangular prism the box has a volume of 20 and 5 16 cubic inches. What is the height of Ada's ring box? Once again, we look at the formula. Volume equals length times width times height. We don't know the height, so now we have an unknown variable. So we do substitute the length, 2 and a half. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, two and a half, and the um, width, with two and a half as well, and the height, we don't know. The volume, we do know, and that is 20 and 5 sixteenths. So now we make all the fraction, uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions, and then we multiply the five halves, so that's 25 over 4, and then we know that we when we are solving for an unknown variable in an equation, we have to remove um, the numbers on the side with the variable to the other side of the equation. So we're going to move the 25 and 4, 25 fourths over to the other side by doing the inverse of multiplication, which is the opposite. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide 325 sixteenths by 25 over 4 and when we find that we will get our height and that's 13 over 4 and oh, I skipped a part because we're dividing fractions we do have to do keep change reciprocal so we keep the first fraction change division to multiplication and find the reciprocal which is 4 over 25 then multiply straight across and you get 13 over 4 and then you have to change or simplify that and you get three and one fourth. So the height of the box is three and one fourth inches. Now let's look at our try it. We have volume is equal to length times width times height. Our volume is 40 and 32 hundredths is equal to the length we don't know, the width is <clears throat> three and two tenths 
and the height is four and five tenths. Now we have to multiply and we're gonna multiply the three and two tenths times the four and five tenths. That's gonna give us 14 and four tenths. And that's gonna be multiplied to the length. It's still gonna equal 40 and 32 hundredths. Now we wanna solve for <clears throat> the length. So we have to remove or move over the um, term, this. 14 and 4 tenths to the other side of the equation by doing the inverse of this operation, which is multiplication. So the inverse is division. So we're going to, I'm going to write it up here because I don't have space down there, divide 40 and 32 hundredths by 14 and 4 tenths. So that will give us the value of the length and that is two and eight tenths. So the length of this cube or rectangular prism rather is two eight tenths centimeters. Okay, all right, now let's solve B. We have again, volume is equal to length times width times height. And this is a cube, so we do have all the same um, measurements here. So four and a half times four and a half times four and a half. Um, we could, in this instance, because it is a cube, we could just do um, four and a half. Um, cubed, put a parenthesis around it, okay, we could also do that, that means the same thing as four and a half times four and a half times four and a half, so now let's do that, so four and a half, um, if you're using a calculator, four and a half needs to be a decimal. So four and a half, we know half, thinking half of a dollar, right? Half of a dollar is 50 cents. So the decimal for half would be 50, 0.50 or 0.5. And so 4.5 represents four and a half. So in your calculator, you could do 4.5 times 4.5 times 4.5. And then that will give us the value of 91 and 125 thousandths. But if there, let's say it was a multiple choice question and they were looking for a fraction answer, we could do this. We have to make these fractions into improper fractions. So we do four times two plus one is nine. So we have nine over two for each one of these. And so then we multiply straight across. So nine times nine is 81. Two times two is four. So we have these two. Then we have <clears throat> 81 times nine and 41 times two. 729 over eight. 729 divided by 8 is 91. You do a long division. That's 9. 72. Bring down the 9. Then that's 9. Uh, <clears throat> and then 8 goes into 9 once. And then you have Eight nine minus eight is one. So then you have ninety one. Your remainder is one, and your denominator is eight.
So 91 and 1 eighth feet cubed would be the fraction version of the 91 and 125 hundredths.